Welcome to video number seven, treatment strategies for managing insomnia in major depressive disorder. What are the treatment strategies for managing insomnia in patients with major depressive disorder? Insomnia disorder is a common and a challenging condition to treat in patients with major depressive disorder. The treatment of insomnia should be personalized to address psychiatric, medical, sleep, and lifestyle factors that may precipitate and or perpetuate insomnia. In this section, we will discuss and evaluate the evidence for multiple treatment strategies targeting insomnia disorder comorbid with major depressive disorder. Secondly, we'll review the evidence base supporting cognitive behavioral therapy or CBTI, including digital CBTI, for management of insomnia complaints in patients with major depressive disorder. Finally, advanced treatment interventions, including ketamine and neuromodulation interventions, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS, electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, and vagal nerve stimulation, or VNS, may hold potential for improving insomnia outcomes in patients, especially those with treatment-resistant major depression. The treatment strategies include conventional strategies used in clinical practice, such as adding sedating antidepressants, non-benzodiazepine hypnotics, and use of atypical antipsychotics. Insomnia may improve in parallel with other depressive symptoms in response to the standard first-line antidepressant medications such as SSRIs. However, some patients may have severe insomnia to be intolerable during the weeks required for antidepressant medications to take effect, or insomnia may persist despite improvements in other depressive symptoms. Medications including trazodone, mirtazapine, and tricyclic antidepressants can be prescribed as a monotherapy or as an adjunct to first-line treatments such as SSRIs or SNRIs. These medications are used commonly in clinical practice. However, the evidence supporting the use of sedating antidepressants in treatment of insomnia in major depressive disorder is rather slim. The increase in slow-wave sleep caused by sedating antidepressants is attributed to 5-HT2A2C antagonism. The clinicians are advised to consider discontinuing the sedating antidepressants to determine if insomnia is responded to the primary antidepressant treatment in order to reduce side effects and polypharmacy risks. In terms of sedating antidepressants, trazodone, which acts on 5-HT2 and alpha-1 receptors, is commonly used for treatment of insomnia in patients with major depressive disorder. The usual dosing for insomnia with the use of trazodone is 50 to 150 milligrams before bedtime. Use of trazodone has been associated with decreased wake after sleep onset, increased total sleep time, and increased stage N3 sleep. Metazapine, which acts primarily on histaminergic receptors, is used for treatment of insomnia at dosages 7.5 to 15 milligrams before bedtime. It has been associated with decreased sleep onset latency, increased total sleep time, and increased stage N3 sleep. Atypical antipsychotics are increasingly prescribed for the management of major depressive disorder and medications including quetiapine, olanzapine, and combination with fluoxetine, arpiprazole, brexpiprazole, and keraprazine have been FDA approved as adjunct treatments for major depression. The role of atypical antipsychotics in treating insomnia complaints in patients with major depressive disorder has been investigated in a few studies. Quetiapine extended release dosage between 50 to 300 milligrams has been examined for efficacy in improving sleep outcomes in patients with major depressive disorder. Both objective and subjective improvements in sleep quality have been reported for quetiapine extended release, both as an adjunct and monotherapy for major depressive disorder. Adjunct treatment with olanzapine has been associated with improvements in sleep onset latency, sleep efficiency, and total sleep time in patients with major depressive disorder based on polysomnography findings. When prescribing atypical antipsychotics, clinicians are advised to monitor for side effects such as daytime somnolence, weight gain, extrapyramidal side effects, metabolic side effects, and risk for tardive dyskinesia. Concern for sleepwalking and sleep related eating behaviors associated with atypical antipsychotic use has been reported in the literature. 
Clinicians are advised to screen for sleep period eating in patients with atypical antipsychotics presenting with symptoms of weight gain. In one study using the combination of fluoxetine and azopiclone at a dose of 3 mg nightly, the authors found improvements in both subjective sleep quality and objective sleep parameters such as total sleep time, wake after sleep onset time, and sleep efficiency with the use of fluoxetine and azopiclone combination as compared to fluoxetine and placebo. Additionally, patients on this drug combination had a faster onset of antidepressant response and a greater magnitude of antidepressant effect as compared to fluoxetine and placebo combination. Two other studies using Zolpridem 10 mg immediate release formulation and Zolpridem 12.5 mg extended release formulation in addition to SSRIs showed similar effects in terms of sleep outcomes but without augmentation of antidepressant effects. The efficacy of CBTI for insomnia has been evaluated in patients with major depressive disorder taking standard antidepressant treatments in multiple studies. In a 16-week, three-site randomized control trial named as Treatment of Insomnia and Depression Study or Triad Study, 150 adult participants with major depressive disorder and insomnia were randomly assigned to depression pharmacotherapy plus seven sessions of either CBTI or control therapy for insomnia that included sleep education. The authors noted that CBTI was superior to control intervention in significantly reducing insomnia severity, but not depression. However, improvements in insomnia at six weeks mediated eventual remission from depression as an early change in insomnia severity predicted depression remission in the CBTI group, but not the control group. In another randomized clinical trial of 291 adult patients who were 60 years or older and had insomnia disorder, two months of cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia or CBTI resulted in a decreased likelihood of incident and recurrent depression during 36 months of follow-up compared with sleep education therapy. Sustained insomnia remission in adults undergoing CBTI resulted in decreased likelihood of developing depression versus no insomnia remission in adults receiving sleep education in this study. Digital CBTI has been approved by FDA for treatment of insomnia disorder since 2020. The effect of digital CBTI has been examined in alleviating insomnia and mood symptoms in different studies. The Good Night study included a large sample size of 1,149 adult patients with insomnia and subthreshold depression symptoms who were randomized to digital CBTI and Health Watch, which is internet-based placebo treatment. The authors reported that digital CBTI significantly improved insomnia symptoms and reduced depressive symptoms at six weeks and six months. However, digital CBTI did not significantly reduce the number of participants with major depressive disorder compared to placebo at follow-up. In another digital CBTI study, the authors examined the efficacy of digital CBTI in terms of depression prevention in subjects with insomnia. 658 adults with insomnia disorder, approximately half of whom had depressive symptoms rated as moderate or worse at baseline, were randomized to digital CBTI or online sleep education. At one-year follow-up, depression severity continued to be significantly lower in the digital CBTI group relative to control condition. Also, the number of individuals who reported no depression at one year follow-up was 51% higher in the digital CBTI condition as compared to the control intervention. Additionally, in those subjects with minimal to no depression at baseline, the incident rate of moderate to severe depression at one year follow-up was reduced by half in the digital CBTI intervention relative to the control intervention. Insomnia is a clinical risk factor for suicide independent of depression severity. There's very limited data examining the effects of insomnia treatments on suicidal ideations in patients with insomnia disorder and major depression. Reducing suicidal ideations through insomnia treatment or RESTIT study examined the effects of extended release zolpidem versus placebo with open-label SSRI use in patients with major depression 
insomnia, and co-occurring SI in an eight-week, three-site, double-blind RCT with 103 adult participants. Suicidal ideation was the main outcome, and it was measured by using scales such as Scale for Suicide Ideation and Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. Insomnia severity was assessed using Insomnia Severity Index. The authors reported that co-prescription of Zolpidem ER 6.25 to 12.5 mg nightly with SSRI reduced SI, particularly in the patients with more severe insomnia. No deaths or suicide attempts were reported in this study. Key points. Different treatment strategies, including sedating antidepressants, non-benzodiazepine hypnotics, and atypical antipsychotics are used for treatment of insomnia disorder in patients with major depressive disorder. CBTI has been shown to improve insomnia in patients with major depressive disorder, and it may likely have antidepressant effects. Digital CBTI is an effective intervention for improving insomnia disorder symptoms, and it has been shown to significantly reduce the incidence of depression during one-year follow-up as compared to the control interventions.